Patrick. What? Where's Whitaker? I got some papers for him. You just missed him. You're headed back to the air. And he did. Uh, looking good. Looking good. Uh-huh. Hit me four, maybe five times. Take a look for yourself. Incoming from nowhere. Much like quail. Quail? There's not a man alive who doesn't want to keep it just that way. Because most folks take no pride in what they've done up through today. While others find the reason is the effort that they've made And maybe that's why leaving ain't so hard You can't win if you don't play the game And nobody hears you talking when you don't have nothing to say Sometimes losing ain't losing after all Sometimes the climb is worth the fall Just don't believe it. Morning, Harry. Come on, Howard. Guy that's scare every fish out of the lake. That's like to play with his horn, that's all. What the hell does he know? I had a 14 pounder on the end of my line. All that noise you made drove them off. Why didn't you just drive the goddamn Jeep out in the middle of the lake? No, no, I'm sorry, Harry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can't you come up here to shoot some tourists, Wayne? I know where there's a couple that are dress out to around 200 apiece. You know those tourists, Harry? Can't live with them, can't live without them. Oh, shit, I can live without them. Dwayne, look at them tin canners out there. They got more goddamn equipment than you've ever seen in your life. They got big gaffing hooks. They're gonna stab the bastards to death. Hey! Don't piss in my lake! Jesus. I don't know what the world is coming to. Next thing you know, they'll be using radar. We need some music and a drink. And maybe Captain Terrific could use a shot, too. Is Kato, that black kid who went out to Vietnam and uh, flies helicopters for Whitaker sometimes? Oh, yeah, Otis. A local hero. Nice fella. He's got a magic touch with machines. He sure cured my old caddy there more than once. Well, he was pulling a log this morning over by Dog Creek, and a bunch of quail bashed into him. Damn near knocked him out of the sky. Oh, sure. Quail don't give a shit for heroes and helicopters. He's up around two, 250 feet. Kind of high for quail. That's what I was thinking. Maybe he was wrong. Uh-uh. No, sir, I was there. I saw it. Well, if it did happen, I'm not saying it did, seeing as I wasn't there, but if it did, it was most likely deodorants that caused it. You want to run that by me again, Harry? 
Did you say deodorants? Dwayne, don't you keep up with science or nothing? You better take the Reader's Digest like I do. There was an article in there a while back explaining how them, them, them spray things, you know, that you fire at your armpits, got some sort of shit in them that goes way up in the, in the ion, ionis something or other. Heats up the uh, atmosphere. Too much sun gets in. Throws everything out of kilter. Yeah, the area so cans. You think that's what it is, huh? No doubt about it. Some of them killer rays from the sun got in there, drove the quail crazy. Put that in your report. It's the 20th century, Dwayne. You got to think up some new ideas to explain the mess things are in. Well, I'm going fishing. Frag the quail. Today marks the 139th day of captivity for the 53 American hostages, and signals out of Iran suggest there is little hope for their immediate release. Mount St. Helens, located in southwest Washington, only 45 miles northeast of the Portland-Vancouver area, may be sending out signals of her own after 123 years of inactivity. Earthquakes have been increasing in the area since yesterday when the mountain was rocked by a quake registering 4.1 on the Richter scale. The U.S. Geological Survey in Boulder, Colorado, announced today that one of its scientists, David Jackson, has been sent to the St. Helens area to investigate the continuing seismic activity. Jackson, she's as beautiful as a sister. What are you talking about, sister? Mon Fuji. Uh, how, how old are you? I get it. You were expecting someone older with gray hair, glasses, a pipe. Not exactly, but I thought you'd be more... Listen, uh... I don't know what your schedule is, Sheriff, but I've got a lot of work to do. Do you think we'll be able to get my gear into your rig? Yeah, I think we can handle that. What the hell are you talking about? Ever use a dog whistle? 
Yeah, when I was a kid, sent away from one one time. Well, it's like that. Any earthquake or volcanic activity is always preceded by a change in the Earth's electromagnetic field. The animals feel this change and they become disoriented. That's why the quail were flying so high. It's all interconnected. Mountains, men, volcanoes, everything. You know, there's a legend here that a long time ago, two Indians got into a fight over a squaw. Got thrown rocks and fire across the Columbia River. Well, the gods got tired of that, changed the Indians into mountains. One of the warriors into Mount Hood, the other one into Mount Adams. Well, the squaw, she became Mount St. Helens. <laughs> I like that. So what's your guess about this mountain of ours, Jackson? I don't have one. But if she goes, I want to be there. Hell, Sheriff, relax. Volcanoes are like people. Every now and then they have to burp. We leave the pressure. They burp. <laughs> Come on. Let's get on the right frequency. Got it. Every frame a masterpiece. Jackson, you're brilliant. And nobody hears you talking when you don't have nothing to say. Sometimes losing ain't losing after all. Sometimes your climb is worth the fall. Sometimes losing ain't losing after all. Sometimes your plan is worth the fall. Thank you. Sean's been in Washington a long time. Okay, this guy goes duck hunting, right? And he brings the ducks home to his wife. Well, hi, sir. Where do I sit down? Oh, go on ahead. This is my wife, Patty Jean, a friend of ours, Linda Steele. This is David Jackson, the geology fellow I was telling you about. Hi. Well, I know that you... you comfortable here with me, Mr. Jackson? Well, I sure be sleeping in the snow, I'll tell you. Well, is that what geologists have to do? Only the stubborn ones, I'm afraid. Hey, Cindy, can we have a couple more pictures over here, please? Have you been around these parts before? I've done some exploration further south. Are you from here? Chicago. Washed up here about nine years ago. No, there's one hiding in here somewhere. Those things are going to kill you. I know. I'll quit tomorrow. I'll get him. Where's the machine? It's back there. You didn't tell me he's cute. Well, I didn't think he was. Well, don't you think he's cute, Linda? Yeah. A little too serious for me, though. But he does have sexy green eyes. Well, you girls feel free to talk dirty while I'm gone because I don't want to hear when I come back. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. You boys don't care what kind of scum you hang out with, do you? This guy dropping any logs on you yet? Ah, well, it don't matter. He ain't gonna be around that much longer anyway. Look, you keep messing with me, and I'm gonna kick your butt so far between your shoulder blades, you're gonna have to stand on your head to go to the john. I'm at you. Koga, I understand you're going to be doing some work on the mountain. That's right. My name's Clyde Whitaker. I own this in a half a dozen logging operations in the area. What kind of work do you think you're going to be doing? Just setting up some instruments to record the amount of volcanic activity in the area. <laughs> volcanic activity? <laughs> 
you? Uh, hell, I've lived around these parts all my life. We've never had anything like that. I guess that's what we'll find out then. Now, just hold on. Just... It's just that it's such a sensitive issue. I mean, there's an awful lot of tourism in these parts. How many people do you think are going to want to pitch their tents on a volcano? Only take one wrong word, and this place is going to turn into a ghost town. Mister, either you have a live volcano or you have a dead one. But you're not going to find out which by keeping your eye on the cash register. Old Clyde don't like to listen to that kind of talk. I never knew an old Clyde who did. <laughs> you know, I thought you were a dream come true. Yes, I was wrong. Want to dance? This guy's talking about volcanoes. You touch my hand, used to be too hot to hold. But now there's no fire, you've lost desire. You've grown cold. So I'll be leaving peaceably, I'd hate to do eternity in the hell I've known. I ain't much for misery when you don't take me seriously. It sure gets old. One man's heaven is another man's hell. Takes me a while. Let's go home, honey. I'm a little drunk. But you might as well go with me. That man's heaven, cause you sure are hell to me. People here quit dancing when the music stops. Wouldn't want to break a local custom. Hmm. Where the hell is the goddamn water pressure? Place is shut to hell. How you doing in there, duck? Warm enough? Looks a little black around the wings. Let's see what Edie says about a duck being black around the wings. Base duck every 20 minutes and cherry sauce. Cherry sauce. Damn it, Edie, how am I gonna base the duck on cherry sauce? I'm all out of cherry sauce. Looks like I gotta make a load of sauce. If I had some cherries, I could make a load of sauce. What are you gonna do? At least you could do is set the table. So how about you? Any loves in your life? I'm afraid I've been accused of only relating to mountains. Well, my marriage only lasted a couple of weeks. I thought it was going to last forever, but the guy left and I never saw him again. Then a month later, I found out I was pregnant. Boy or girl? Boy. You know, sometimes you do the right thing even when you're crazy. I saw this picture of this beautiful mountain that looked so cool and far away. I just packed up my bags and left. Chad was born here. At least that's one thing I never regretted doing. You're right. Mountain country's a great place to raise kids. Yeah, it sure is. Would you like some coffee? Thanks, Jenny. I'll call you in the morning about tomorrow. Okay, bye, Chad. I'm gonna make some coffee, Chad, and you're gonna go to bed. Oh, Mom, let me finish the program. Each has its own peculiar way of living. See those lizards, Chad? They're the only lizards in the world that can swim. Because that's the Galapagos Islands, and I've been there. They have giant turtles there, too. I know. I rode one once. <laughs> he didn't like it much. Gee, I'd like to go there someday. Go to bed, Chad. Oh, Mom. Move it. Now. Night, Mom. Good night, Chad. Night, David. Don't forget to brush your teeth. Those turtles live to be 100 years old. Nice kid. Yeah, I know.
Why don't we take him now? Shut up, Curry. This is my party. Just He's gonna pay for dropping that log. <laughs> Your side. I'm really gonna enjoy this. You won't drop any more logs. Where is that chopper, Chuck? Well, I guess I'll just have to bust up his gall dang car then. Ain't no place you could have gone except up here. All right, you go over that way. You go down there. We'll get that apple mucker. George, right here. Come on. sort of thing every morning. <laughs> Only on Tuesday and Thursday. Monday and Wednesday, I go to the gym. <laughs> what the hell was that? A 4.5 on the Richter scale. Five, maybe. Six miles away. Felt like it was right here to me. Yeah. Hey. You're a volcano dude, ain't you? <laughs> yeah. Tell me something, man. Is that thing gonna blow? Huh? I don't know for sure, but she's sure trying to tell us something. We've been recording oscillations all morning. Minor quakes, 4.5. No. No harmonic tremors at present, but these quakes are continuous. Well, it may look like that from Boulderloid, but not from here. We've just had an avalanche on the north face. I would recommend that you call the governor and preparations be made for a possible evacuation. I said possible evacuation, Lloyd, for Christ's sake. Give me a break. Yeah, Lloyd. Great. 
No, I don't want to unduly alarm anyone either. Sheriff's right here. He'll take care of the local level. I'll keep you posted. Desk jockey. I don't understand it. One minute you arrive, you're talking about volcanoes burping. The next minute, you're planning an evacuation. Now, what the hell is going on? Take it easy, Dwayne. I'm not planning an evacuation. I just want to be prepared. That's all. What is it you wanted me to do? Is there anybody who can provide us with accurate information as to who's working, living, vacationing in this area in case they have to be evacuated? Yeah, Harry Truman knows that. He knows everything, but he's not the easiest guy in the world to talk to. I don't care about that. Can you get us together with him? Yeah, sure. Now, listen, Jackson, uh, I don't know about Victor Scales or harmonic trimmers, but I've lived here all my life, and I know these people. But you can't shove them around like pieces on a checkerboard without giving them good reason. Now, is that goddamn mountain going to blow or not? In 1883, there was a volcano in the Pacific called Krakatoa. It exploded. They heard the noise 2,000 miles away. 33,000 people died. That's what a volcano does. You can worship them or you can get the hell out of their way. But you'd better not ignore them. Call you later. St. Helens is just one of a great circle of volcanoes that go all the way around the Pacific Ocean. David, do you ever think about anything besides volcanoes? Have you ever seen The Wizard of Oz? <laughs> yes. It was one of the first movies I ever saw. I think I was about six. I was fascinated by the tornado. Do you remember it? Yeah, it scared me, but I'm frightened of a thunderstorm, so... I kept dreaming that the tornado was coming after me. It was going to take me up inside where everything was swirling. And I'd go higher and higher until finally I could see right down inside me, right into its eye. I'm so sure I'd like for you to do that. That's your friggin' truck? Yeah, that's my truck. Why? What's it doing out in the middle of the road, blocking traffic? What traffic? Me, asshole. I'm the traffic. Now move your damn truck. Now you got enough room? No, I ain't got enough room. This is a big car. Now you gotta move your truck. What do you mean I gotta move my truck? Any idiot could drive through there. Listen, you happy prick. Only an idiot to park his truck in the middle of the road. What are you, on drugs or something? Now move your truck or I'll run you down. Jesus Christ. Geriatric idiot. Sure do. Oh, fool. How's that son of yours? He's fine. Tell him I'm going to come by one of these days and take a fishing. All right. You with him? Uh-huh. He's gone too far over. He's going to have to get some wood or something put under that back wheel if he wants to get any traction. Who the hell was that? That was Harry Truman, kiddo.
1236 this afternoon, Mount St. Helens became the first active volcano on the North American continent in over 60 years. In southern Washington, residents were startled by the force of the window-rattling blast. And in Portland, people witnessed a spectacular view of the eruption. A deep crater, 1,000 yards long, 120 yards wide, and 50 feet deep, was ripped out of the north face of the summit. Washington state authorities report that the explosion has caused a massive traffic jam on the major highways in southeastern Washington as people try to get a good view of the volcano. And Lloyd Wagner, head of the U.S. Geological Survey, on his way to the mountain, says today enough sophisticated equipment now is in place to provide adequate warnings of any major eruption. something to me on the phone about law enforcement authorities taking care of things. I didn't pass a single cop on the way up here. Every friggin' highway north from Vancouver is clogged with traffic. What in the hell do those stupid bumpkins think they're gonna see anyway? Nice to see you too, Lloyd. Don't you get smart with me, Jackson. Every time you show up someplace, there's chaos. Well, now I'm in charge of monitoring this mountain. Whether you like it or not, we're gonna have some order around here. You do understand, I David. Oh, yeah, Lloyd. I've never had any trouble understanding you. Lloyd. Don't go up empty-handed. Sure. Maybe not as big. Grab the pole. Come on, son. I got something to show you. Start her up. That's good. Now release the brake. Okay. Now put her in drive. Okay, go. She's awful big, Harry. Never mind, big. Just steer it. Does she go fast? Like the wind. Me and the wife used to drive her 100 miles an hour every night. All right, take it easy. Easy. All right. What for crash her, Harry? If you crash her, I'll feed you to my dog. Take her a couple of days to finish you up. All right, hold it! Do you ever ride a turtle, Harry? Can't say as I have. Well, they live on the Galapagos Islands. That's funny. I don't get over that way like I used to. Turtles, huh? I got something for you. Not a turtle, mind you. Don't drive off. Aww. What's his name? I don't know. He's your puppy. Well, maybe I could call him Harry. Yeah, you could do that. <laughs>
like you gentlemen are seeing it right now. And so we say goodbye to beautiful Mount St. Helens, jewel of the Cascade. Hey, wait a moment. Where are we going? Cooper, man, I gotta get back. Hey, I'm not through taking pictures. I wanna go around again. No, I can't do it, lady. I got close to 40 people I gotta get up here by Sunday. What a ripoff! You're making 500 bucks a flight! Whoa, flight. back up! You ain't being ripped off! You get a volcano to blow up in your backyard, you take me up in your helicopter! Business is business! You think where I'm coming from, Gage? in there there's three farms can't get in there directly you got to go way around take this logging road that comes in from the northwest that's open of course you got to drive very careful not lose your temper you had more than enough room to drive around and you know it oh kind of touchy any Dwayne the scientist fella here now what about the duck bay area oh well, there's just some jippo loggers in there what's that independent Whitaker's got a bunch of crews up there and there's a bunch of tin canners. Tin canners? Tin canners. Foreigners, like yourself. Dropping tin cans and plastic bags all over the place that I gotta pick up. Who else? Hunters? Good elk country in there. We're all told there must be a hundred heads scattered around. Now then, you just gonna tell all them folks to pack up and move on? I'll handle that, Harry. Oh, hell no, Dwayne. Let me do it. Nothing I like better than to tell somebody to get their ass or their truck out of the way. I said I'll take care of it, Harry. I really appreciate this, Harry. You do, huh? Want to give me cash or write me a check? <laughs> William O. Douglas, Supreme Court Justice. By God, you're right. That is William O. Douglas. You recognize the weird-looking geezer with him? Do you know Douglas? Oh, sure. Good friend of mine. We even went on a five-day pack trip together. Oh, forget it. That's a goddamn drunk. I fell in the fire and burned my ass. <laughs> Wasn't that funny, Dwayne? My ass was on fire. Don't forget the sight of Douglas running through the trees trying to pour water on my ass. Uh, then about six weeks later, when he got back to Washington, he sent me a picture, you know, all dressed up in his Supreme Court outfit. And on the bottom of the picture, he wrote, Take it easy, Harry. You won't always have William O. Douglas to watch out for your ass. All right, tell me, Professor Wizard, are we gonna all get blown to hell or what? I don't know for sure. You're gonna have to come down off the mountain too, Harry. Bullshit. Who told you that? No friggin' way. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. You got the 
cougar at March in Baton Rouge. Here comes the National Guard. We got kids with balloons. It looks like Disney. Can't handle this by myself. like that. I hate it. I can't stand it. Are you all right? Will you come home with me? I want you to hold me. Check all the back rows and check for stragglers, all right? And make sure those kids stay together. This is Sheriff Temple down here at Spirit. Make sure Highway 607 is all clear. We should be out of here in 20, 30 minutes. Hey, you guys get that vehicle out of there. Get that sheet going. <laughs> your bathroom. That's an official sign. I don't want anybody on my porch. That includes those steps. You want to go to the John? You got to get in line. That's ridiculous. It ain't as ridiculous as what I'm looking at. You should have better facilities for your visitors. These are totally inadequate. If you feel that way about it, you can head out to the trees and point your ass as you please. It'll bring out the bear in you. I hope he's got him with I don't know. But we'll have to be back in a week or the animals will die. Oh, boy. Now what? Okay. Here you are, sir. What is this? Wait a minute. What yeah. is this? It's instructions for evacuation, sir. In case of volcanic eruption, move away from the explosion, not towards it. What a brilliant piece of advice. Presumably some young sociologist has been given a tremendous amount of money to come up with this idea. Or did you write it? No, sir, I didn't write it. Victor, can this man do something to help us or not? Will you hold your tongue or I'll cut it out and send it to your mother? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Take it easy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, darling. This is a red zone by order of the governor. You're requested to leave immediately. Take Interstate 5 South. Thank you for your cooperation. 
You're not going anywhere except back where you came from. Look, I don't know who gave you a license to drive this thing, but if you're not careful, mister, I'm going to have you hauled out of here. Who the hell are you? Lloyd Wagner, chief of operations of the USGS. Where are you from, fella? Minneapolis. Well, let me tell you something, Mr. Lloyd Wagner. In Skamania County, we got three chiefs, and I'm two of them. Now, get the hell out of my way. I want to go home. It's for your own good. I mean, we can't be responsible. Oh, shit me, buddy. I got a turd in every pocket. Almost every day, Harry. Well, I tell you something. I do like talking to you people better when you're not sticking things in my face. <laughs> oh, come on, Harry. Who do you think you're fooling? You know you love the attention. The whole world's watching you. Don't mean shit to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I, I tell you something. You can sit out here sometimes in the middle of the afternoon. It's so peaceful and quiet. You can hear chainsaws 50 miles away, clear as a bell. And sometimes the wind starts blowing up in the tops of the trees. It comes in gusts. You can hear it coming. And all of a sudden, it's right over you. And then it's gone. Don't you ever get lonely, Harry? Yeah, I did for a bit, I think, after Edie died. But it's better to be lonely up here, I tell you that. I've been in cities. I, I've seen that rat race. Right, you stay up here a while. Then you lay eyes on a city. You wonder how we survived this long. <laughs> yes, sir. This country was founded by people too stubborn to do exactly what some crazy king told them. <laughs> no offense attended. I'm taking Harry. <laughs> yeah, we're the only country in the world that's got a constitution that says we have every right to do what we want to do. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right Used to be people were proud to say they're Americans. That's right. Yeah. support their families if the volcano erupts and they're killed. That is panic talk. Nobody's going to be killed. You're going to have to stop working. Your men are going to have to move out of the red zone. You can close down and move out voluntarily, or the National Guard will do it for you. I think you better get out of here. Think about it, Whitaker. One way or the other. All right, what do you say? Let's get back to work. Colonel, there's someone coming up to see you. They just let him through the barrier. Dr. Lucius Romeranton, founder and pastor of the Holy Church of the Dark Arts, Raleigh, North Carolina. I understand the great God Vulcan has chosen to make his appearance in this half of the world. Am I correct, gentlemen? Gentlemen, there is a volcano in the area, Mount St. Helens, I believe. Yes, that's right. Well, I believe I've found a way to appease the great God Vulcan. How are you going to do that? Colonel. You will be our holy escort to the top of the mountain. Now, you will escort Pamela and myself. She's 15 years old and a virgin. After a brief ceremony at the top of that fiery inferno, she will hurl herself into the jaws of that treacherous, teething fire and thereby appease the great god Vulcan. The mountain will not erupt and your people will be saved. What do you feel about this, Pamela? Whatever the doctor says. Well, Doctor, I don't want you to think that we're not grateful you coming all the way from Raleigh and all, but we'd like to try a couple of other things first. Maybe we could hold you in reserve. And if we do get to sacrificing, I think we'd like to use a local girl. Don't say I never gave you a chance. Don't even know if she'll be a virgin tomorrow. All right. I'll find another volcano for you. I'll tell you again. And I might be a lot younger than you. You don't really believe in that stuff, do you? Of course I do. This is a science. Thousands of years of research have gone into this. You see these three lines right here? This is your heart, your career, and this is your life line. Boy, you got a long life line. I do, huh? Yeah. And you see the break right here? 
Yeah? That's the number of children you're going to have. Oh, yeah? How many? Uh, six. Seven. 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 <laughs> Sorry about you and Whitaker, hon. Oh, well, it's no big deal. It's not the end of the world. I didn't expect you to come back here. There's no other place in Cougar to go. Hey, look, it's Harry. What's safe? What's safe today? Well, reports from the U.S. Geological Survey indicate hey, listen, that... I ain't coming down off this mountain. I don't give a damn what anybody says. The governor, the president of the United States, even the king of England. As a matter of fact, Harry, we have a queen at the moment. That's your problem. Yep, keep sticking that thing up my nose. <laughs> See the expression of that reporter. So face. you're saying that people should decide for themselves? I'm saying what I said, but I ain't saying it again. <laughs> I can't believe they put that on television. Don't they realize? People see that and they say, right on, Harry. You tell them, Harry. We won't come off the mountain either. God damn it, they have no idea what they're dealing with. Relax. It's okay. Read the other poem. <laughs> A state of emergency was declared in Washington today as smoke and ash continue to spew from Mount St. Helens. By order of the governor, a red zone and a blue zone have been created in the area around the mountain, which scientists feel is in the most immediate danger. In the small town of Cougar, 12 miles to the south, it has been closed by the National Guard roadblocks to all but residents. Merchants and shopkeepers protested the action, which sent a booming volcano business plummeting when the town was cut off. Well, despite this action, the U.S. Geological Survey and the U.S. Forest Service issued a joint statement today that, quote, all observations imply there is no indication that a major eruption of molten rock will occur at any time in the near future, unquote. You're the one that put these barriers here on whose authority? On the authority of the governor of the state of Washington. You've cut me off, damn it! Look at all those people, you've cut them off! You've cut off Cougar! There isn't a tourist within a thousand miles, right? Like you said, who'd want to pitch his tent on the side of a volcano? I want these barriers moved now. Can't do that. By the way, I understand you're logging up the North Fork of the Toodle. Well, that crew will be moved out by me within 24 hours. We'll see about that. If nobody can get in this town, I can't make any money. And if this keeps up, I'll be bankrupt in two months. All right, all right, simmer down. Quiet down, will you? As you know, there is a question as to where the barriers are placed in this area. Yeah. Now, I talked to the governor's office today. We came to an agreement. Yeah. Yeah. The governor has delegated the authority to Mr. Lloyd Wagner to determine where the barriers are to be placed. Right, well, Mr. Wagner has determined that Cougar should be open to tourists again. Hold on, will you? Just hold your horses. I also talked to the attorney general today. It's pretty busy, huh, Clyde? <laughs> yeah, all right. What I'm saying is all the residents, all the workers in this area, you can go into the red zones, provided you sign a simple little legal waiver which absolves the state of any responsibilities. So we're in business! Now, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Before you sign those waivers, I think you have a right Mr. to know what Mr. is... Mr. Jackson, I'm sure nobody's interested in what Whitaker! you... Whitaker! You've been yakking all day long. Let him talk. I want to hear what he has to say. I don't think you have any idea what you're getting these people into. Mr. Wagner knows. Do you know what would happen if Mount St. Helens had a major eruption and you were standing anywhere near it? You'd melt. You'd liquefy. In the blink of an eye, 1,600 degrees Fahrenheit. That fast. No hair, no eyes, no flesh. You're a puddle. Now, let's say you're standing five or six miles away from it. You think you're going to be any safer there? 
You'll be just as dead. Only it'll be slower. First the sky will go black. You'll start to gag, choke. Because there's so much boiling ash in the air, it burns out your lungs. Don't worry about the logging. There won't be any. Trees will be flattened for miles, laid out like toothpicks. Fried in the heat. The fish at Spirit Lake will be boiled alive in the water they're swimming in. You'll never see them again in your lifetime. You won't even want to look at this land. It'll be worse than the surface of the moon. But don't worry. You sign these waivers. You go back to your homes and your jobs because chances are you won't be around to see anything anyway. You have no right to talk to these people. It's irresponsible. Way out of line. Ladies and gentlemen, there is absolutely no conclusive proof that there will be a major eruption. No matter what Mr. Jackson has to say about it. Is there, David? No, Lloyd. Not yet, there isn't. Since there is no definite proof, I think we can trust Mr. Wagner's assessment and let calmer heads prevail. I have waivers for everyone to sign, so come on up here. Let's sign these things. All right. Just give me that piece of paper. Harry, I have a special one just for you. I don't have to sign that. Now, wait a minute. I thought you were staying. You look at too much TV, Clyde. How you doing that, Professor Wizard? Not too good, Harry. Don't worry about it. I like your speech. Sure as hell gave him something to think about. Your mouth, huh? That's right, Harry. That's what happens. Oh, shit. Hell of a way to go. Wasn't very successful, was I? You told him the truth. You put yourself on the line and you told him exactly how it was. Oh, that was wonderful. Dick. I love you. Oh, you don't really love me. You're just overwhelmed by my fantastic ability to get large groups of people to follow my advice. Don't joke. You affected some people in there today. You affected me the very first time I laid my eyes on you. No, Just let me finish. You know that before I met you, I didn't think I ever wanted to be with a man again. I just want to go someplace quiet and work and raise Chad. But I don't feel that way anymore. Whatever happens, I just want you to know that. Now, as you can see from these photographs, there's a bulge which has appeared on the north face of the mountain. It's the most serious potential hazard that we've encountered so far. Our primary concern is that this bulge will overextend itself and shear off during an earthquake. As you know, we've been averaging 33 earthquakes a day for the last week and a half. Excuse me, Mr. Wagner, but wouldn't a bulge expanding at such a rapid rate suggest that there's going to be an eruption? Well, it could be molten rock pushing up inside the cone of the crater. And if that was the case, then the answer to your question would be yes. However, it is my opinion that it's insignificant. It's strictly a gravity anomaly. I have some photographs here taken by NASA. They show where the mountain is hot. So far, we don't have any conclusive data. Is there any way to find out if there's going to be an eruption? Short of going down inside the volcano's crater and taking samples, no. I don't think anybody's crazy enough to do that. Are you sure you know what in the hell you're doing? I know what I'm doing. Just fly. 
Jack! Just think of it as war orders. It'll all come back to you. Biggest damn gun barrel I ever flew down. Well, I'll tell you, if she goes off, we won't feel a thing. went down inside the crater, took some samples of volcanic gas. The presence of hydrogen sulfide indicates that magma is rising inside the volcano. No, no, he's here with me right now. Uh-huh. I'll tell him that you're grateful. Thank you, Governor. What you did was the most unbelievably reckless and irresponsible act that I've encountered in my whole professional career. Irresponsible. This stunt even beats the one you pulled off in Alaska. You'd have been gone if I hadn't yanked you off that mountain. What about those barriers you wanted to have moved? What about those waivers you advised people to sign? I advise no one to sign anything, David. Because you become a politician, Lloyd. You risk the life of every single person in this community with your goddamn crock of shit at that meeting. You knew the bulge was growing five feet a day, but you didn't say anything, so don't talk to me about irresponsibility. As far as I'm concerned, I have a chance of a lifetime here to watch a dormant volcano awaken. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I want to watch it. All of it. Because I'm a scientist, Lloyd. I really don't know what you are.
Shouldn't be that time, Harry. <coughs> what time is that, Dwayne? Time to get off this mountain before she blows. Time to get the hell out of here. Come on, Dwayne. You're getting to sound like the professor. Besides, you know me better than that. God damn it, Harry. If you don't pack up right now, I'm going to throw your ass in the back of that rig. You got that? You and who else? Oh, shit, Harry. Why don't you come stay with Patty Jean and me, huh? Until this thing calms down. You know I can't do that, Dwayne. I buried my wife and daughter up here. Besides, I got to stay here and take care of my dog. Yeah, I guess you do. Take care, Harry. Dwayne, you know what the problem is. Like I told you before, it's all those goddamn aerosol cans. Some of the killer rays from the sun got through, drove everybody crazy for a while. Come on, girl. Time for you and me to put on the feedback. Come on, we're having people food tonight. Let me give you a hand with that. Come on, let's take a look at my machine, huh? You've been wanting to take a ride. Well, you're going to get one this morning, buddy. I don't want to go. I want to stay here with you. It's not going to be for long. A week. Maybe less. That's right. Yeah. Linda, I have a job to do. And when I finish, I'll be coming straight to you. You know that, don't you? What if something happens? What if you don't come off the mountain? I mean, I would... Nothing's gonna happen.
How's it going, Professor? Don't you have a home to go to? Nope. Here, Harry, this is for you. God bless you. Nectar of the gods. <coughs> How'd you know I had a cold? <laughs> we we'll drink to Edie. Who's Edie? Didn't I ever tell you about Edie? Edie was the most beautiful woman God ever created. Everybody around here knew Edie. We had 24 years. Not bad. She's the one I bought the pink caddy for. Got her, she loved them gold wheels. Can you imagine? Some guy offered me seven grand for it after she died. I ain't never gonna sell it. Never. I just realized something. I ain't played the piano for anybody since Edie died. Did you know I play the bagpipes, Harry? I haven't got them with you, have you? No. Good. I hate the bagpipes. Sounds like pigs being murdered. You know, Dave, that mountain's gonna blow its cork any time. I know it is. I think I knew it from the beginning. How come you can feel it so good and you just got here? Seems like I've been here a long time. How come you're staying, knowing what you do? Same reason you are, Harry. Not really, Professor. I'm gonna level with you. You know, I got an awful lot of fans out there. I kind of enjoy all the attention I'm getting. Besides, where would I go anyway? Come on, Harry. No, it ain't the same, Dave. I've been and I've done. Went to war, lived with a woman. I've seen a lot of times. But yours is still ahead of you. A lot of promise, too. Not gonna pull me off this goddamn mountain. This one's mine. I wanna be there. I can't explain it any better. To me, the worst thing that could happen would be at the moment when I felt my life slipping from me, the last thought I'd have would be, oh God, if I'd only done this, if I'd only done that. I think that's the same no matter how old you get. Don't you? Yeah. But you're gonna be dead for a long, long time. Maybe. Maybe not. Nobody really knows the answer to that one, do they, Harry? Maybe we just keep coming back over and over again. Till we finally get it right. Well, it's sure something to sleep on. Gotta get going. I want to take a couple of pictures of the mountain in the morning. Uh, Dave. You're more than welcome to stay here if you want. Thanks, Harry. I'd like that.
trust any more of either. You're out on your ass. You understand that? Go on, get the work.
walking towards the only light I can see. I can feel the ash now in my eyes. It's getting very difficult to breathe. It burns. At this very moment, I, I honest to God, believe I'm dead. We do know that Harry Truman was at his lodge at Spirit Lake, which was obliterated by the explosion, and that David Jackson, the young geologist from Boulder, was monitoring instruments on the north face of the mountain when it exploded. On the international scene, the price of gold jumped as much as twenty nine slipping from me, the last thought I'd have would be, oh God, if I'd only done this, if I'd only done that. sit out here sometime in the middle of the afternoon it's so peaceful and quiet you can hear chainsaws 50 miles away clear as a bell and sometimes the wind starts blowing up in the tops of the trees it comes in gusts you can hear it coming and all of a sudden it's right over you and then it's gone The eruption of Mount St. Helens was equivalent to the explosive power of 500 atomic bombs. It was heard over 300 miles away. More than a cubic mile was instantly blasted from the top of the mountain. That's over a ton of rock for every person on this earth. Enough dust and ash to cover all of Manhattan Island to a depth of 400 feet. The blast flattened 200 square miles of forest. Over 175,000 animals were killed. 59 people are dead. According to scientists, Mount St. Helens could erupt again at any time. He told us he would never leave the mountain. No matter what it did, he wouldn't go. Some folks think he's crazy, but how can you blame him? Because he won't be forced to leave his home. He said, I've lived up here the best years of my life. And 
This is where I live and where I choose to die. 